join me for the prayer of confession. It's done in the style of the litany. What do we hold and treasure most? Is it the promises of God? What captives, what captivates our attention? Is it the grace of God? God of mercy and grace. We, we are, are vulnerable people who sometimes ignore the vulnerable. We are We're broken people who don't always pay attention to the world's brokenness. Heal us, O oh God. Make us better healers. Mend our rifts that we might be better builders. Cleanse our hearts so that we can clear out the damage of hurt and oppression. We are yours, loving God. Help us to live and know this better. Amen. Um. God's blessing has been poured out for all of us, has been poured out for all of creation. Be reminded today and every day that God loves you without condition. Amen.
and someone speaking to God, and it's beautiful. In this morning's Gospel reading, we're going to be talking about Jesus and how he needed to get away from everyone. Just get away and pray. And that's something that we can all do in our hearts. But for me, sometimes I think, well, Jess, you should really pray. You should really get closer to God. And, and I just, sometimes I just don't know what to say. I don't know what, what to do, what to ask for, anything. So um, because this is a common problem, Pope Francis came up with a wonderful little prayer for us to remember. It's called the Five Finger Prayer. And you can do this anywhere or anytime. You can do it in the morning. You can do it before lunch. You can do it at night. All you need is this, your hand. So each of your fingers, you're going to pray for something. And they're very specific. So with your thumb, you're going to pray for your family and your friends. With your index finger, this one here, you're going to pray for your teachers and the people who guide you. With your middle finger, you're going to pray for the leaders. With the ring finger, right here, this is the weakest of the fingers on your hand, and it reminds us to pray for the sick and the poor. And your little finger, that's where you ask for your prayers. You come last. Everyone else comes forward. So let's practice that prayer. Dear God, we pray for my family, my sister, my mom, my dad, Stephen, my husband. I pray for all my new friends here at First Congregational Church. Also, God, please pray and have my prayers for my teachers, my spiritual director, my people I learn from. Please, God, guide our elected leaders. May they work for justice and peace and harmony. Please remember those who are sick and poor, those who need our help. Keep them forefront in our minds. And finally, God, thank you for this opportunity for me to learn how to pray. Please be my greatest teacher and leader. In your holy name we pray. Amen. This morning's Hebrew Scriptures reading is from Isaiah, chapter 40, 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers. It is he who stretches out like the heavens, like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my Lord. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He is understanding. 
his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. He strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. This morning's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought him all who were sick and possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Here ends this morning's readings. May God add a blessing of understanding to these words. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh God, my strength and my Redeemer. This week we continue on with Jesus and his disciples. Jesus' mission is in full swing. Having just taught at the synagogue and exercised an unclean spirit, Jesus goes with Simon, Andrew, James, and John to Simon's house. There he learns that Simon's mother-in-law is quite ill. And Jesus takes her by the hand, lifts her up, and heals her. And she's so recovered from her illness that she immediately begins to serve her guests. She returns to her role in the household, her role in society. She continues on with her life. At sunset, after the Sabbath has ended, a crowd begins to gather. People are looking for Jesus to do the work of healing. There is a crush of people, all who are sick or possessed with demons. Not some, all. And we learn that Jesus healed many and cast out many demons. Not all, many. It must have been overwhelming to Jesus, all those people needing him, his touch, his ability. In our weekly Bible study, Doug mentioned a scene that he remembered from Jesus Christ Superstar. It's a similar scene. Jesus is in the street, and all these people are descending upon him, pleading with him to be healed, pleading for help. I have shared this on Facebook, so I hope you can check it out. So Jesus is in the midst of all these people needing him, needing him to heal them. And he tries. But it's just too much. The need is just too great. Finally, an exasperated Jesus cries out, Heal yourselves! And though Jesus doesn't say that in this morning's Gospel, I do wonder what it was like for Jesus to be in the middle of all that suffering. To come out into the world, into the midst of needy, demanding, hurting, and messy humanity. When you think about it, it, it really must have been a long day for Jesus. He began by teaching in the synagogue, cleansing an unclean spirit, going to Simon's house to get a break, healing the mother-in-law, people descending upon them. After sunset, he begins 
healing. And then he takes off in the darkness before dawn. He's alone to a deserted place to pray, to think and reflect. It's more than physical rest he seeks. Does he need a moment to think? Is he praying for guidance? And so Jesus rests, but not for long. His disciples hunt him down. Everyone is searching for you, they say. I don't doubt it. Jesus rejoins them. He's rested and healed from his experience. Jesus is able to continue to serve. Despite the searching crowd, the crowd that could bring him fame and possibly wealth, his response to his disciples is, let's move on. Let's go to the next town. We'll continue preaching the good news to everyone. In a way that's similar to how Simon's mother-in-law was able to continue with her life to serve her guests, Jesus, after his rest and recuperation, continues with his life, his mission to serve all of humanity. Even Jesus needs to rest. We, we all need to rest. If we can't rest, we can't think. We can't problem solve. We don't have the energy for creative solutions for creative thinking. When I was in college, I, I took some time off and helped a friend relocate to New Orleans where she would be attending graduate school. We were, I think you could say, completely unprepared, really underfunded. As a result, we ended up couch surfing for a long time. It felt like years, but it was really probably just weeks. We certainly weren't on the streets, but nevertheless, it was an exhausting experience. You never have space, you have no privacy, you never get to be alone. I, I remember it being difficult just to get to work, let alone try to fix the housing situation in my life. I remember thinking that going back to school seemed like a very, very good idea at that point. And I think about people who are houseless, for real, not just couch surfing. The homeless, they really have no space and no downtime, trying to sleep on a mat or a cot in a crowded shelter while trying to keep their stuff safe. It's exhausting. A friend of mine who worked at a shelter in Boston told me that people would put the legs of their cots inside their shoes to keep people from taking their shoes. That certainly doesn't set one up for a restful night. I think we all know exhaustion. We all know what it is to be exhausted. How many times have you tried to do basic things while you're exhausted? It's hard. I think we've all ended up with something along the lines of a coffee cup in the freezer. <laughs> Tears rolling down as we try to get a key in a lock that doesn't fit. We all need to rest. This past year, um, when I was working for Grace Street Ministry in Portland, there was an organization we worked with, and they opened up um, a special kind of emergency shelter, a wellness shelter. It was opened in an empty gymnasium at the local university, which was closed due to COVID. What made it a wellness shelter was that they were trying to keep people free from the virus. The beds were off the ground, they were spaced appropriately. The clients were able to keep the same bed each night. And they had daytime access there. As you probably know, many homeless shelters require people to leave early in the morning and they have to take all of their stuff with them. These guests were also tested regularly for COVID and their temperatures were taken upon entry. Everyone who worked with the homeless was so, we were so happy for this wellness shelter. Because what we realized at the beginning of the pandemic is that the people who were most vulnerable, the people who were older, the people who were diabetic, the people who had HIV and AIDS, they would not sleep in a shelter because they were so afraid of catching the virus and what would happen to them. So this shelter gave them a safer option. 
It gave everyone a safer option. It was such a relief. We had been on pins and needles, worried about how COVID would just rip through the homeless population. And while we were so focused on preventing the spread of COVID and the role, this positive role the wellness shelter would play in that, we were completely surprised by another outcome. At the wellness shelter, people were actually allowed to rest. Daytime access to their beds allowed them to nap if they needed to. It gave them a place to store their belongings. Because of the layout of the shelter and the trust of the social workers who staffed there, people felt safe and they could sleep through the night. They didn't have the stress of getting up early in the morning and slogging in the cold, wintry streets. If the weather was bad, they could just stay inside, warm and dry, maybe even get a coffee. And they could be in a common area, they could be alone, they could rest. They could read, think, write, crochet, draw. And what this led to was a lower level of generalized anxiety. You could feel the tension lower at this shelter than anywhere else where homeless folks gathered. People were able to begin the process of fixing what was wrong with their lives. I remember a young man saying to me, Pastor, you wouldn't believe it. I'm going to go back to school. There, there's special funding for people like me. Family units started to be formed. Family type units were forming. You had little homey touches. Art started to be hung on the walls. The more able people who were more able started to help those with greater challenges. I remember one poor young woman, she would just paint her eyes dark, not, not with straight lines, but just a mass of dark, and her lips a mass dark. There's so much anger and hurt and pain in her. She had been through just the most shocking abuse from her family. And she was also mentally ill, and she struggled with her medication, taking it and managing it and communicating with her doctors. A group of women stepped up and started helping her. They would remind her and encourage her to take her medication. They would reach out to the social workers if they felt she needed extra help. It was really heartwarming to see her cared for by her sisters of the street. Many others had the opportunity to deal with their problems, those difficult problems that require deep emotional resources. Pastor Jessica, how can I get in touch with my kids? I cried when she asked me that. We need to be rested to nurture our relationships. When we're exhausted, it's difficult to give anything positive to anyone. We all need to rest. I follow an inspiring racial justice seeking, spiritual renewal driven organization with its roots deep in the womenist and black liberation theology. It's called the NAP Ministry, and it is NAP as in sleep. They encourage people to rest. The founder at one point even provided space for folks to have naps on their lunch times. And while this might sound like a joke or a little hokey, it's not. It's Jesus escaping the crowds, going to a deserted place and praying before dawn. Our hyper-consumer capitalist culture, our hyper-plugged-in social media-driven culture, that dominant side of our culture that commodifies everything, even Self-care is overwhelming and self-perpetuating. We foolishly believe that we can cure our poor, overwhelmed spirits by more consumption, more work for more money, for more followers, more popularity, more likes. The NAP ministry founded by Trisha Hershey understands that this go, go, go nature of our culture is supremely damaging. The constant demand on our lives is we, we push so hard 
work so fast for so long that we don't question anything. And if we do, we're too exhausted to do anything to change it. And we end up getting caught in this web of thinking, this mode of doing it. It's difficult to even step outside of that web. Percy says, rest is a form of resistance because it disrupts and pushes back against capitalism and white supremacy. You see, our profits over people capitalist system was built upon slavery, upon the annihilation of indigenous people, upon the labor of poor immigrants. And while laws may have changed, the status quo hasn't. Ms. Hershey writes, to imagine a new world that centers liberation, we must practice rest as our foundation to invent, restore, imagine, build. I love that message of hope. It's simple. It's radical. It's difficult. But the message is clear. We all need to rest. Even Jesus. Even church volunteers. Even whole congregations. These past few months I've been here, I've been struck by what a dedicated volunteer pool First Congregational Church has. There's always so much to do. In a church, there's all these nuts and bolts things of taking care of things, the building, staff. And on top of that, First Congo has really been through a lot in these last five or six years. You've lost a beloved organist, a music director and choir director retired and moved away. We have a wonderful new organist a wonderful new music director. We've had a change of office staff. You've had a long-term minister move on, an interim minister, a settled minister, an interim minister, and now me. One, two, three, four, five. In the midst of your search process for me, COVID hit. Just thinking about it, just reading that, makes me exhausted. So how, how do we rest as a congregation? How do we support each other and honor each other's needs? How do we honor our needs to rest? And I think that's a conversation we can have because we all need rest. Rest is required to invent, restore, imagine, build. Amen. The next hymn in the Pilgrim Hymnal is number 395, Behold Us, Lord, a Little Space, verses 1 and 6.
Northwest Family Foods, that's our local food shelf. No one should go hungry. That they do is an obscenity before God. As the pandemic drags on, more and more people are experiencing food insecurity, and Northwest Family Foods is there to help. You can bring your donations to the church, and we'll take it over, or you can take it right to them. Please join me in the invitation to communion. God be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up our hearts. We lift, lift them, them up, up to God. Give thanks to God. It, it is right to give, give God, God thanks and praise. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve of his death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the Passover feast. Jesus took the bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a similar way, he took the cup after supper and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for the new covenant, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. I invite you to take your bread, your donuts, your coffee, and share in communion this morning.
You can contact me directly or let the office know by Thursday, and we'll include it in Sunday's prayers. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Holy One, creator of all, lover of all creation, today we gather in this new worship, physically dis distanced from each other. May your spirit help keep us connected to one another. May we be reminded that you are always near God of peace. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.